I am Elle Penelope, author of Epic Fantasy and Paranormal Romance, and welcome to My Imaginary Friends, a look behind the scenes of an author mapping the worlds in my head and making them a reality. Hello friends, today is Friday, April 10th, 2020, and this is episode 63 of My Imaginary Friends. I'm Leslie. So this week's best thing. You may think that it is turning in my book to my editor, which was a great thing that happened this week, and I am extremely happy about it. But in reality, the thing that brought me the most joy this week was the original cast of Hamilton singing Alexander Hamilton, the first song, on uh, John Krasinski's web show, Some Good News. If you have not seen it, or if you just want to watch it again, which I highly recommend, um, I'll link to it in the show notes. Of course, I think it requires that you are a Hamilton fan, of which I am a huge fan. Um, I, I briefly told the story on Twitter that um, you know I saw Hamilton for the first time in 2015 when I was at RWA. And since the theater is actually right next to the hotel that they used to have RWA at, my brother had gotten tickets. My brother's the cool hunter of the family. And so it was actually still in previews in July of 2015. I believe it was like the last week of previews. So it had buzz, but it wasn't the juggernaut quite yet. I So I went with my brother and actually in front of us in line outside the theater were John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Jason Sudeikis, and Olivia Wilde. And they were all friends, obviously. They were out for this date night, I guess. And seeing the original cast on John Krasinski's show kind of just brought that back. And I remember I sat in the theater. We were in like the second row on the left. Um, And it was funny because the audience was so diverse. I mean, I guess every audience in plays in New York are diverse, but we were sitting there. There was a person on my left of indeterminate gender and indeterminate race, young person. And on the other side was this ancient white lady in like jewels and like this elaborate hairdo and it was just very New York and I left and I knew it it was the most amazing piece of art that I had ever seen in my entire life and this was at least a year a year and a half before the cast album came out so I had no way to remember anything you know like I had snippets of songs and pieces of things and like but until the cast album came out I couldn't sing along with it and I couldn't um like really I I just had these vague memories of my experience and being impacted and so then finally when I was able to play the album out wear it out um it was wonderful so yes that was this week's best thing but coming in a close second was um turning in my book Requiem of Silence book four of the Earth Singer Chronicles the grand finale Part of the reason why it's not this week's best thing is because I'm still rather ambivalent about it. And I just really need my editor's feedback on the end because I was fizzling. And I, like I said last week, I, I can't even tell right now. Like maybe it's wonderful and I just have no perspective, but my gut is telling me it's not wonderful. And uh, I hope that time and assistance will help me fix it and turn it into what I want it to be, like what I want to give the readers. But yeah, this process was very difficult. And uh, so yes, I rested this week. I did not do any writing. I I knew I wasn't going to do any, any kind of writing, but I did manage to do something else creative. So I had published a series of short stories and a novella in a romance themed magazine called Heart's Kiss. R.I.P. Hearts Kiss because they are no longer with us. And it was a great magazine. I really liked what they were trying to do. And I also liked that the editors really liked my writing and kind of just let me write whatever I wanted, which was wonderful as a creative. But now I'm going to be republishing the stories and I have made it a little harder for myself because I was writing whatever I wanted to write. So um, the series is, is called The Cupid Guild and it's a series of contemporary romances with that are lightly paranormal so there's a cupid character who is a magical being who sort of bumbles around trying to get her charges to fall in love but there's not really that much paranormal in it they're mostly contemporary romances but they're not rom-coms you know there i think there is some humor there because i do have this character um but they're also like they deal with things like parental abuse and the death of a parent and infertility and uh, just like real life things. 
And so it makes it hard to market, you know. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to position them properly to make sure that people get what they expect from them. And a large part of that is the cover. So like I said, there's four of them. The first three are between nine and 11, 11 and a half thousand words. And the last one is 23,000 words. So they're short and I don't know if they're gonna sell well or make any money. So I didn't wanna spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on four covers. Uh, initially, I was actually just going to bundle them all together in an anthology and just have one book. And then last week in Mastermind, we talked about it. And Nikisha, my friend, um, was like, well, why don't you publish them all individually and then at the end bundle them and try to get the algorithm working and all of that. And I was like, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt. Um, I think I will put them in KU initially, in Kindle Unlimited, so that people with the subscription can read them. And then at the end, just get have um have the bundle available but now that means i need four covers slash five covers for the bundle cover um so i had created a list of cover designers over the course of years when i was originally self-publishing and so i went through some of them aren't, aren't in business anymore but i looked through pre-mades just in case i knew that pre-mades probably aren't going to work because all of my characters are black so then i started looking at stock images which for black people, it's still hard. For black couples, it's really hard. I had almost found the couples that were almost right. And I had decided I'm gonna to try to design them myself so I don't have to drop, you know, hundreds of dollars on covers for things that I'm not sure are going to sell because they are difficult to market. Long story short, or no, I'm still long. Um, I did design the covers myself and I went with a more of an illustrated look because I thought that it fit the stories the best. And it was also the best thing I could design and make it look the way I wanted it to look. I'm really happy with them. I hope that they communicate the type of story that's inside in a good way, which is what the cover is actually supposed to do. So I put to use my 200 plus depositphotos.com credits, which is a stock photo site. And every year there would be this mega sale where you could get a hundred credits for like $39. I think they've raised it to $49 or $59 now, but it's still an amazing deal. And so I would buy this deal every year and I had 300 credits at one point and they don't expire. So at this point in time, I still have over 200 credits, deposit photos. And so, yeah, I just, I put a dent in my credit situation. I bought a bunch of illustrations that were, um, that I could pick apart and use different pieces of. And I built the covers and I actually built them in Canva. So I downloaded the illustrations as EPS files and then I took them into Adobe Illustrator and then I would export each like the different pieces of them as transparent ping files, import those into Canva and then manipulate and design there. Just because it was faster, like I could have done it all in Illustrator except I really dislike Illustrator. I could have done it all in Adobe Photoshop which I dislike less than Illustrator, but it would have just taken me longer. My original thinking was to just mock them up in Canva, which is canva.com, an online design program, which is pretty simple. Um, it doesn't have a lot of features. It has enough features. I think it has just enough. And I don't hate illustrated covers. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of strong feelings about these cartoon covers for romances slash women's fiction that are everywhere now. Um, I don't hate them. I don't love them all the time but eh. and it happened to be what I was able to design and I'm actually really happy with how my covers turned out I ended up spending about six or seven hours on all five uh, so I did each 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 story and then a box set cover I also changed the names of the stories from the ones from the publication names so I honestly hadn't given a ton of thought to the titles the first time around the stories were titled Before I Go, Before I Fall, Before I Run, and Before I Break. And I thought that if I changed the title, it could communicate a little bit more about the story and the genre and just help the reader know like what they're getting. Um, like Before I Go doesn't tell you anything. So the new covers are the Cupid Mix-Up, the Cupid Getaway, the Cupid Complication, and the Cupid Fiasco. And I think that lets you know that even if it's not really paranormal, there is this Cupid element to it that I thought was important to communicate. And I think the covers are really adorable. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Um, Canva is a little bit irritating when you have a lot of layers 
because they don't have an interface to show you the layer. So you just have to click around and like move your mouse until you hover over the border of uh, your component of the image. But it all worked out. It worked out in a reasonable amount of time. I spent uh, $0 on, on the covers because I already had the credits. I got everything from deposit photos. I used a nice font that was already in Canva. Um, I did the free trial of Canva Pro, which helped a lot in terms of uh, just some of the effects and the color filtering abilities that they give you with Pro. But yeah, I'm I'm happy with them, so I'll link to them, and I'm gonna put everything on pre-order and uh, release them maybe every three or four weeks. I'm still trying to see what the strategy should be. And at the end, there will be the anthology of the complete series for those who want that. So that was my creative endeavor for the week. And I just, I keep looking at these covers. I'm really, really happy with them. Like, I think they turned out good. There's some whimsy to them, um, but not too much whimsy, I think. I hope. Uh, so yeah, the last thing I have to do before I can get these up is to write the book descriptions. That will go on uh, the retailers. I have very short versions. I want to just expand it to maybe a paragraph each and then I will figure out my schedule. So I'm hoping to release the first one before the end of April and then like I said every three weeks-ish maybe? Two, three weeks? I don't know. We'll see. I do plan to go back to writing next week and looking at this manuscript that I have a draft of that I want to work on and revise and eventually send to my agent. I haven't looked at this manuscript in months, maybe a year or so. So I have to reread it and then apply some sort of methodology to revising it and fixing it. I know the first half is pretty solid and the second half is abominable. So that is on tap for next week. Also, Writer ups and downs. Um, book three of Earth Senior Chronicles, Cry of Metal and Bone, received a review in Publishers Weekly. Now the first two books both got starred reviews in that magazine, and which meant they really liked them. Unfortunately, they did not like the third book as much. And so I saw that review, I think the day before I turned in the book. It was like one of the last days as I was working on book four. And I don't usually read reviews, but I do read trade reviews. And I had been wondering, oh, you know, the first two books got stars, wouldn't it be nice if all four books got stars? But that's probably not likely. Um, but it was still like a hope of mine. And it wasn't just a not starred review. It was like, they did not like the book that much. So that kind of, that definitely brought me down. Um, I sent it to my agent, I sent it to my critique partners and my brother, and they were all very like, oh, I totally disagree. You know, they actually disagreed with some of the substance of the review and had the exact opposite opinion, which is nice to hear, definitely. But, you know, Publishers Weekly is a big trade magazine, and it's super disappointing that the, you know, just to get a non-positive review. So yeah, I had to allow that to just sort of sink in and and to have it on a day when I was actually trying to get a lot of writing done was also very difficult because I'm already very angsty about book four if people don't like book three and for the reasons that this reviewer didn't like it book four is like that on steroids so there's just no hope there like that's already done um yeah because I think books three and four are a little bit different in the series they are a little they're veering less romancy there's still a strong love story in each of these books, but they're more fantasy and they're more, there's just more going on. And like bad reviews are part of the gig, which I get, but it's also, like, we're human beings and I think it's, it's fine to have a sniffle, uh, eat lots of cookies and cake after you get a bad review. And then put your big girl pants on and keep going, which is what eventually I had to do. But I did give myself the rest of the day, even as I was working and pushing through to to feel bad about it. And I still feel bad about it. Like, I don't think I'm never not going to feel bad about that. 
I think that even if there are other positive reviews, this one will still hurt. And then if they're not more positive reviews, it's going to hurt more. <laughs> like, definitely. But um, my brother went on to Goodreads and because uh, the arcs have been out. And so he was like, well, there's all these five star reviews and there's more positive reviews of this book than negative reviews on Goodreads. So that is really nice. And it's a balance. I mean, I know, I know, no, no, so clearly that every book is not going to be for everybody. And that's just, that's just it, you know? So at the end of the day, I look at what I was trying to do, um, whether or not I'm 100% successful at every effort I make, you know, I'm not going to be. That's just, that's just life. But I look back on that book and I haven't read it in a while. I should probably read it again. Uh, but I, I'm happy with it, you know? I remember feeling really good about that book and not every aspect of it. I mean, it's not perfect, but on the whole, I'm pleased with it. I guess that's that's all I can do at the end of the day is just write books that I think are good, that I like, and hopefully other people will. And I know that everybody will not agree. Um, and that's just part of it. So, yeah, it still sucks. I'm not going to lie. I did manage to read something that I highly recommend. Um, Binding Shadows by Jasmine Silvera is a, a first book in a new series for her. And it is witches and uh, wolf shifters in Prague in a world that is run by powerful necromancers who control everything. And it is delightful. I loved it. I gobbled it up. I read it in one sitting and it just made me happy. So if you are looking for a great paranormal romance slash urban fantasy, um, her writing is fantastic. I've recommended Death's Dancer, which is the first book in her previous series. So this new series is actually like a prequel series to the to the first series. I, I definitely recommend checking out Jasmine Silvera. Also, as I record this, last night was the live reading that I did um, with HowWritersWrite.com. And the replay uh, is up. I'll put the link in the show notes. I read a, a section from Whispers of Shadow and Flame, book two. And I had a lot of fun. There were a lot of great questions. And um, my friend Cerise Rennie Murphy hosted it. And the giveaway will be up for another couple of days as um, when this comes out. So if you do watch the replay and enter the giveaway, good luck. We're giving away paperback copies of the series. And my birthday is coming up. My birthday is April 18th, and I will be doing a special birthday giveaway that I will post places. I guess I'll talk about it next week, too, because it'll go on for a little while. And that's coming up. So exciting things. Hopefully more writing and hopefully more resting. <laughs> hopefully more reading, too. I haven't done as much reading as I would like. So that's all for me for this week. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I hope that you are staying sane and safe and this will all come to an end soon seems like we're flattening the curve so there is hope at the end of this and um yeah happy reading for episode show notes and to sign up for the footnotes newsletter go to myimaginaryfriendsshow.com subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and if you are a visual learner check out the video episodes on YouTube. I would love a rating and review to help support the show. And My Imaginary Friends is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. For more fantastic podcasts, check out frolic.media slash podcasts. <laughs>